So, due to the popularity of our first Taylor versus Faith battle, we feel like it's time for a rematch. Yes, absolutely. And we've had these guitars for a few years now, we've gigged them, we've toured them, and we've picked up on all the quirks, problems, good points and bad points. Mm -hmm. So firstly, reading our analytics tells us that 90% of you beautiful people that watch our videos actually aren't subscribed to the channel. So yeah, with that said, if you find content like this interesting, whether it be reviews, tip videos, we do lots of acoustic covers mm -hmm. and we will be doing podcasts as well, then you know, please consider subscribing to our channel. Hit that thumbs up button. That would be great, that would help us within the algorithm of YouTube. Let's jump into the video. So as working musicians, we've been together for over a decade now, playing hundreds of shows, and we've a plethora of knowledge that we can give to you guys. Absolutely, we want to use every ounce of that knowledge we have. You know, if that aids you from buying your first guitar to even recording your first album, then that's what we're here to provide. So in the last video, we discussed a lot of specs with these guitars, didn't we? Yeah, we Comparing did. them together, and we're not going to do that in this video. Uh, so if you do want to see us comparing the specs and just see how we reached a verdict on that, then hit this card here, that will take you to that video. But let's dive into this video, Rob. Mm -hmm. So let's start off this review with the unplugged sound. Because let's face it, that's the reason why you should buy an acoustic, not on its looks. No, it's a good point you make actually about the sound of a guitar being unamplified acoustically. I remember I'm a big PRS fan when it comes to playing electric guitars. Mm. But when they first brought out the first acoustic PRS, I was desperate to try it out. So, shameless plug, we went to Reedy's. Brilliant, brilliant music store. In, in Blackburn. Uh, mm. I went there with my dad. He was interested in looking as well and saw it there. Got it off the off the shelf, played a couple of chords, and it felt really numb. It felt quite dead, as uh, almost like it had a really old set of strings on it. It mm. didn't feel all that great, to be honest. They've probably improved a lot now, but this was you know this was a long time ago. And uh, my dad pointed at this Taylor on the wall. So what about what about that one? And back then, being a younger guy, I was like, that just looks really boring, though. You know, but just, yeah, just try it. A bit more flashy back in the day, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, so it's like, just try it, just try it. So I picked it off the wall, go on, and if I must, just went like that. Like, ooh, that sounds beautiful. Well, that is. Well, I like that. Mm. That sounds well good. Yeah. So that is the, but that is the point. Right there and then, I bought this guitar. Yeah, and it was off sound, not off looks. Yeah, a guitar chooses you, doesn't it? And it's all about it's all about playing that first chord now. It resonates, especially with acoustic, how it resonates with your body. You you feel it a lot more, um, and yeah, it is it chooses you. It has to pick you. You can't just go off what you think's right. So our verdict for an unplugged sound, mm -hmm. when it comes just down to sound, we feel that the Taylor shines through the most definitely. on this. Most definitely. It's it's brighter, it, it it cuts through the mix really well. The Faith doesn't sound bad by any means, but I think the reason behind it is with this being laminated back and sides, it produces very bright tone. It's a satin finish, whereas this, it's a mahogany, a, a trembesi, it's a breed of mahogany. It's also got a thick sort of lacquered finish on there, mm. and that can deaden the tone. Mm. And it does have a much softer tone. If I play a G chord and you follow it as well, yeah, they both sound good. They do. Yeah. They both sound nice. They both sound very different. Some people prefer the more mellow, relaxed tone. Some people might find this too too brash, too mm. too punchy. But we find it works well when playing your faith against this Taylor, don't Exactly, we? yes. So I have a, a Faith Venus as well, but it's a Naked series Cedar, which is a quite a dark, punchy tone. Whenever we're jamming with the Taylor, I always find that that really cuts through the mix, yeah. whereas this just gets lost. It does. You just cannot hear it. And when no. you play, especially when you're playing your lead legs, I mean, luckily we play together a lot, so I know when you're gonna come back in and you know we kind of vibe off each other, but, with that really even unplugged you can hear every single note whereas this it just gets lost it does but when you play this and you're finger picking on your own it's a beautiful tone yes 
but like I say, as a, a working musician, if you wanted to play in a, a you know, like an inner duo, or you're playing in with a cajon player or something like that, that I find in an old club setting really wins. It does, 100%. Yeah. So which guitar do you think sounds best unplugged? Please let us know in the comments. Okay, so if you're one of them types that just is going to play in your bedroom unplugged or around a campfire with some friends, then, then tone is extremely important. Mm -hmm. But you've also got to think, if you're playing it on a daily basis in your bedroom and stuff, you've really got to worry about playability as well. That's right. I'd say they're the most two main points you've got to course, consider yeah. when buying an acoustic yeah if all you want to do is play it unplugged and have a little noodle around and mm. you know the one that you pick up out the corner of a room a couple mm. of times a week and have a play on it's got to be sound and playability hasn't it it has yeah i mean and if you're going to going to be a gigging musician or anything then playability is key over over anything if you're plugging it in but if you're if you're looking for just as a standalone acoustic then them two are the main points absolutely so one acoustic might sound absolutely fantastic mm -hmm. unplugged and when you t men when you mention playability if there's something that you grab hold of regardless of how good it sounds if you find it really awkward to play you know the body's too big you find your arms too far over the neck's too fat or too thin mm -hmm. you know all these different types of gloss back necks compared to a nice smooth neck yeah. you know you might have the best sounding guitar in the world to you but if you really struggle to play it's going to sound poor yeah. So you really need to consider playability. And with that said, we find for us personally, the Taylor is not as playable as the Faith. The Faith no. is the better guitar for us when it comes to playability. Mm. And let's quickly tell you why. For one, it's the thickness of the neck. Yeah, yeah, that is more of a thinner neck. It's more of a, like I say, it's more of a lead shredder. It, you know, like it feels more like a Stratocaster neck compared to anything really, doesn't it? It's really thin. You yes. know, especially for an acoustic neck, it's extremely thin. But where the neck sits in your hand, it doesn't meet, this part of your hand basically doesn't meet the back of the neck. Yeah. And over the course of a gig, that can become really tiresome, mm. in, you know, especially when you're reaching for, for your bar chords and stuff. And that sounds okay, I think. But when you start trying to do... Get a lot of fluff if you don't really press down and get it right you get a lot of that mm. i'm using all the full force of the tip of my thumb to press the rest mm. of the chord down and your thumb is extremely high up yeah up the, the center of the neck as well you're not you're not lodged into the curve are you? no i mean again sounds great mm. but it's just not as playable as mm. that that the neck of that being bigger it fills it fills the area of the hands for mm. me and it it just feels more like you're resting on it rather than bridging over it and it's yeah. more comfortable i feel the same it's a beautiful beautiful satin neck as well it's really smooth it plays beautiful neck the action's amazing and it's yeah it's such a nice playing guitar 
Whereas you've had to kind of mod that out to get that play, you know, feeling how you've wanted to do. Yeah, you? yeah. There's some small bods, and again, I'll put it in the B-roll so you can see it. But what I've done is I've used some really fine sandpaper, as far as you know, some uh, metal sanding mm. paper to get it really, really smooth on the back. It wasn't unsmooth to start with. To be fair, mm. it was just a personal preference. I wanted that real played-in feel. Uh, and there is still a little bit of setting up I want to do on this guitar to get it absolutely perfect and that. And what we'll do is we'll probably do a quick update video on that in future, so look out for that. Yeah. Um, but while we're talking about playability, whereas we were going in favour of the faith on feel, when it comes to playability in another aspect, especially live, when I do a lot of improvisation when we play for soloing and licks and bits and pieces, it's the lack of fret markers. Now, mm. most people who are professional would say, well, you should be able to play with or without fret markers and, and whatnot, and I agree. However, when you're on a dark stage and all you've got on the top here is tiny little fret markers, and you need, within an instant, to be able to fly to a particular fret to play a little bit of lead work, you can sometimes get that wrong, and it can sometimes trip you up. Mm. Especially if you're playing with a capo yeah, I can understand your point of view on that, and that it, you know, when you're coming across, you need to just have that. It's just a point of preference, isn't it? It is. It's just yeah. like I say, it is just a point of reference. Mm. It's just, it really is just to quickly dial in. Right, I know where I am, and know where you go because, mm. you know, they're a lot easier to see. You know, if you, if you, you know, as you're playing, you, you do have a slight. Well, I do anyway. I'm not like that. I have a slight lean, mm. and I'm playing. You can see them a lot easier than you can them, especially yeah. like like you know, we've played on some very dark stages mm -hmm. you know and when the lights are shining in your eyes sometimes it is awkward to see just in mm -hmm. that it's that split second so we mentioned obviously the neck where we where i'd sanded it the only other mod i have made to this guitar is the bridge pins mm -hmm. so they were supplied with plastic bridge pins which is fine plastic or wood's fine uh, just just due to the age of the guitar really i've had it for ooh, six years maybe um, and due to various restringing, one of them failed. It, not very expensive, really. I'm just replaced them with something just that little bit nicer, really. The wood, yeah. they've got like this nice abalone on them. Um, they do. A uh, cheap mod, but they just add a little bit more yeah. quality to the to the look, I think. Yeah, they definitely do. It, look, it looks like, it. they look like they belong on the guitar as well. Yeah. It looks beautiful. It works. It's really nice. It does work, yeah. <laughs> So obviously as well as being great acoustics, these are obviously electroacoustic as well. Um, so when it comes to that, tone really is irrelevant. It goes out the window, doesn't it really? Acoustic it tone, in. yeah. Once yeah. it's plugged in, you've got the sound of the piezo yeah. uh, and how you choose to work it. The first thing I want to pick up on is the preamp systems. I've, I find that a lot more difficult to adjust on the fly because they've got every... every, every Weird, every, isn't it? Yeah, every button and every, every knob on it to turn has a tiny little rubber um it's like a little little rubber dial isn't it yeah, it's like, like i say it easily slips out your fingertips yeah it's, it? it's it's not very, they're really not easy to adjust really quick on the fly whereas this you can quickly just yeah you know, you can do whatever you need to do yeah. shoot back does it so light up or is it black is it just like that? It's just like that, yeah, yeah. Which is going to make it really hard because you, you, well, I mean, yeah, you you find out you you don't write bass, middle, treble, volume, you don't know where mm. it is. But like I say, if you if you're trying to do it quick, it's difficult. It's quite, yeah, it's it's very awkward. It's really fiddly that. So another issue we've come across with this, especially when you're plugged in and you're playing a live gig through a PA system, is the resonance of this oh, body. Yeah. It sounds fantastic when it's unplugged. 
mm. plug it in, it sounds fantastic, but it's it has point, yeah. major, major feedback issues. I've never had a feedback issue with that guitar no. in the two or three years I've had it. But no. this, oh, there's been so many times and it's frustrating because your crowd's getting louder. You want to you want to start turning the PA up a bit, get the party started, mm. as it were. And you can't because this will feed back. And we play with the, the bungs, the plugs that you can put in to the sound hall, so you haven't got that problem as much. That didn't, it helped to a degree, but still found the issue. But the biggest pain in the backside with this is the phase switch is inside. There'll be a tiny little switch you've got to root around and, you know, to switch the phase to try and stop that issue. Why would they put it there? Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's the most ridiculous place you can put a phase switch ever. Could, yeah. you, you know, you could just have a little one at the side of these or a little, just a little button or anything. Yeah, I mean, that looks, that dial system there looks really classy. Yeah. Just a three and nothing else and it looks really nice, but you could, you could put it, you could put it next, next to here or something like that. Yeah. You? you could just stuff away. It's just... But, it, but that, that is one of the big issues that we found with this guitar. Whereas with this, it's plug and play. You literally do, you just plug it in, which it should be for the money, and just sit with that. Absolutely. That, isn't, yeah. that is not a cheap guitar. No. So you shouldn't be having problems like that. You shouldn't. And it it's, feeds back terribly. It does, it does. And, and you know, it's uh, it's a shame. It is a shame it because is. it sounds great. Mm. But uh, yeah. that's an issue we wanted to bring, you know, we wanted to bring to your attention. Another thing I wanted to mention actually about the body resonance is when you're playing live, we've mentioned the feedback, but there's more responsiveness from this body if you're like doing bits of percussion. Mm. You know, there's Yeah, there is. That that again feels a little bit dead. It does. Yeah. You know, for the resonance, I mean there's a particular chord I play, uh, and it's sort of like a that real sort of slap in there mm. this is much more responsive it gives you much it sounds like a drum yeah it's got more bass it's got a it. lot more yeah you know hard plugged but it's got a lot yeah whereas that it, it, it's it's almost probably the lacquer that does that it could be the lacquer that yeah. kills the vibration or of it the, could be the wood the top, and the wood on. yeah but it, it does if, if so if you are a if you are one of the guitar players that enjoys doing quite a bit of the percussion type stuff this will be 100% more suited to you. Yeah, definitely. So obviously when we started with that, when you got this, you had a, have a gig bag for it. Yes. And there was this and my Fender and we just had gig bags and we didn't really have a problem with it. And then when, when you upgraded to this and I got my Faith, we uh, ended up getting beautiful Faith um, cases with it. Yeah, full hard cases with them, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. do you think there's any pros and cons to go along with that? Yeah, I do, yeah. To be honest, I think that uh, obviously a hard case is going to look after your guitar better. There's no doubt about that. That being said, though, we've had soft cases, gig bags, for, like you say, your Fender, this Taylor. Mm. There's never, ever been any damage come to the guitar. No, there isn't. N nothing. The only damage that there is, is through playing. Yeah. That's just that's just how it's going to work. You're going to mm. end up, you know, having surface scratches and stuff. But there's never been any dings or bangs uh, from that. And also having gig bags, when you are gigging, I find them easier to pack into a car. Yeah, because you're sliding the footwell and everything else. Exactly, yeah. whereas a, a hard case is just quite a bit more bulky and it's heavier. But with a gig bag, you can put that on your shoulder, mm. which which frees up a hand. You know, you could have your gig bag fully on your shoulder with your guitar on your back. You could have one hand with your amp and another hand with PSP, PSP yeah. or your gig bag or something. Whereas with a hard case, you can't do that. You've mm. got one hand, you've got, you know, and it... And it yeah, it's pros and cons. You've got to weigh that up for yourself, I think. Mm. What What would you prefer? Let us know in the comments. Would you rather have a hard case or a gig bag? And more importantly, tell us why. So when it comes to the conclusion of who is the victor in this rematch, we're pretty much torn. Yeah, we're very much on the fence. We're very much 50-50. Um, this one sounds the best unplugged. Yeah. The playability on that is better. Yeah. 
this is easier to play live. It's more forgiving live. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely an easy guitar to play with live. If you can get this right and you can fight it and you like a guitar that fights you a little bit, this is probably a little bit more rewarding. Mm. Taking into consideration of our verdicts and whatnot, we're not going to go into the aesthetics of the, these guitars on this video, uh, where we've mentioned before about the different timbers that are used and whatnot, because really, having, having mentioned sound and playability, aesthetics is completely subjective. It is. You it know, is. some people love a playing guitar, Mm. Some people love a flashy guitar. So I love a playing guitar. Yeah, yeah. I, and and as I've got older, I'm starting to really, really like a plain looking guitar. Mm. I am. So in conclusion, if you can get both, get both. <laughs> it's as simple That's as that, you know, That's because um, they're both brilliant guitars in the respective fields. They're both priced reasonably, and you wouldn't be disappointed with either. Definitely not. No, no. So. That is, that is basically our conclusion, isn't it? it? You're is. not going to be disappointed with either guitar. No, they're both great. They are. Yeah. So that is our conclusion. You know, we'll let you guys fight out in the comments. Which do you feel is the best guitar? Which do you think looks best? Which do you think sounds best? Let's see if we can find a victor, because we can't pick one. Can you help us pick one? Let us know in the comments. So if you get value out of this video, then please consider subscribing. Absolutely, smash that thumbs up like button and uh, let's try and get this video out to many more musicians just like you. And with that said, I'm Rob. I'm Phil. We're Tickety Boo. And we hope you are too.